Welcome to Fine Art Printmaking at the University of Brighton. Printmaking is really focused on the idea of image making. There's a sense in print that we explore the idea of touch removed. By that I mean that we often draw onto a surface and that surface is then transformed into another surface which then in turn is printed. We might draw on mark resist, that might be exposed onto a screen and then the screen image printed onto paper. So we're very interested and excited by the possibilities of process. It's a skills based course, we're going to teach you the skills in printmaking and that is going to encompass a whole variety of different image making processes. The course embraces both the autographic and the digital, the handmade as well as photography. We're going to explore the idea of the multiple and the interplay between two dimensions and three dimensions. Images, of course, are drawn. They're painted and printed using traditional processes or more contemporary processes. Through that, images are repeated. Images can be collaged, photographed, projected, copied and transformed. And when I'm looking at portfolios, what I'm looking for are all of those different kinds of things and more. Somebody who's really interested in pushing their understanding of different ways of making images. Printmaking is part of the three fine art courses at the University of Brighton. And like all of the fine art courses, the course is driven by the individual student interest. We don't set any briefs apart from the summer holiday project. But we do run practical workshops in the first semester to really help the facilitation of developing ideas so students start to really think about how they can begin almost with nothing and get somewhere. And so each student ultimately develops their own sense of protest and their own visual language. Of course, like all the fine art courses, theory underpins everything that you do. So you attend lectures each week. Research informs your practice and teaching is largely tutorial based and developed to the use of the crit the seminar and the lecture. So what are those things? A crit really is where we pin some work up and we talk about it. A seminar is where we might discuss a piece of work, where we kind of really unpick maybe a particular topic and it comes through both the student and the lecturer. A lecture might be where you're looking at a series of images and talking through a series of kind of concerns. Whereas a tutorial might be a sit down conversation about how your work is going and how you need to think about moving your work forwards. Each student in printmaking gets their own printmaking space. You get a table, you get a wall space, you get a plans chest, you get a locker. But also, of course, many of our students will be working in the workshops using the facilities. So that start of the course will begin with a series of workshops. Day one, we had all the students talking to each other about their summer holiday project. We had them working collaboratively, making a series of drawings. Of course, one of the key things to think about is what do you draw with, but also the idea of how you might draw in relationship to print. This is a negative painting exercise. What do you do if you're drawing with tape? What do you do with the tape drawing afterwards? Can that be used as a relief printing surface? We wanted to question ideas around what do artists make? So ideas around narrative inform this particular one day workshop exploring communication ideas, whereas this workshop focused on, the idea draw without, focused on the idea of drawing without looking at the paper at all and listening to music, thinking about mark making. Can marks be a subject matter in their own right? Where do they take you to? What happens if you're looking at somebody else's work? How can you look at somebody else's work but create your own work from that rather than merely a copy? This exercise explores that process, translating a drawing into 3D and then thinking about how that 3D image can become transformed through other digital processes, here layering and superimposing photographs on top of another. Collage is a great way of generating lots of ideas very quickly and this fed into an exploration of letter forms which then went into one of our first lo-fi printmaking uh, workshops. So through COVID, one of the things that I've developed over this last year or two is the idea of how you can print without access to a press, as well as obviously when you do get your inductions. Here, a lecture on colour theory, playing around with different mixings of colour, different colour harmonies, starting to think about the addition here of, of complementary colours, or thinking about using an analogous palette or a discordant palette. Can colour be a subject in its own right? Within printmaking, we have our own small digital results, which means that you can print directly on 
paper A0 wide in any length you want, or you can also print onto film. Obviously for film, you can then translate that into photographic stencils for screen printing, lithography or photo etching. We're also on the same floor as a digital resource where we have other printers and also open access Mac suites. We teach Photoshop and Illustrator. This was an Illustrator workshop. This is a lo-fi image making workshop using old slides. So really sort of generating new ideas. Here using uh, digital printouts on film grossly enlarged so that the dot matrix becomes a more kind of prevalent act. Of course we also think about how we think about artwork and how we can engage with the work of others. This was a creative writing workshop done in level four. This led into other investigations of the, of the letter form as a way of making work, which also then took us into the idea of book arts. So a series of low fi books in the first year, and as we go into the second year, we then start to think about book binding techniques. All students get inductions in the main printmaking areas. In lithography, where you're learning a plate lithography, and you're learning how to generate ideas through that process. Into screen printing, where you're learning how to transform your imagery from drawing into screen. Here you're also learning things like registration, use of colour, etc. Thinking about different qualities of mark making. And etching. We start with the idea of dry point. We then feed into the idea of hard ground etching and aquatin, followed later on by things like learning about mesotin and using sugar lift and the whole variety of other etching processes you could explore. All students learn how to register uh, an etching to print more than a single colour. That might feed into personal investigation. Relief printing comes a bit later on. All students make a woodcut, usually a two colour woodcut. This is a large A1 size woodcut by Saskia when she was in her first year. Here's one of Sammy's. Some people are really proficient at one technique and some need to kind of develop skills in others. Some just really want to test out lots of different processes. Some may have no experience of printmaking whatsoever. These are some highly inventive relief prints by Simon. Simon really started to see new things coming through the process, so taking risks and see where it leads him. Most of our course is studio based, studio practice based. So we call them studio practice modules. About 80% of your course is studio practice. So once we've done a sort of broad survey of different ways of working, studio practice too starts to be where you start to work much more independently under your own steam. So what are you interested in? What are you trying to explore? Whether it's more performative work or more narrative based imagery, whether workshops that you did in semester one start to inform later development, whether you start to push your use of different processes, where you invent some new ones yourself, here Becca going into photo etching, or uh, Rowan here investigating photography. That part of the course is also further facilitated by other workshops. So we might start to focus much more then on photographic processes. All students get a photography induction. We also do a darkroom induction. And within that, we might start to look at alternative photographic processes. These are a series of photograms made from photocopied imagery. Here we've got some cyanotypes. In semester two, students also learn to addition their prints. Here they're learning the technical skills to produce identical copies of each image. They also have to start thinking about exhibition. And this is the landing show just before Easter in the first year. So each student working with a particular paper size and dimension. This was the opening of that show. We also get students to think about working collaboratively, not just working collaboratively in their prints, but also collaborating the idea of a curated show. How does their work relate to their peers? We recently did a walk in as practice walk with a mixed year group. Here we combined level four and level five. We had an opportunity to really reflect on our year and to see where new ideas might come from that experience. If level four in our first year is about exploring lots of different ways of working, our second year is beginning to define what it is we're all interested in. At the start of the second year, students can get involved in the 2020 Print Exchange, which is an international print exchange. Here we've got the opening of that a couple of years ago. Studio Practice 3 launches with a series of workshops. 
Another collaborative print project, this was a mark making project. There was also a project around the idea of text. This also started to open up new ideas for different students. Ellie in her second year started to really become interested in the idea of the letter form. Scarlett continued her investigation of looking at wildlife and birds, whereas Ottilie started to begin to think about the idea of the aerial image, in particular the use of things like Google Maps and photographs of aerial landscapes. Here Phoebe started to become very, very interested in the idea of body hair and shaving, whereas Harry continued to explore ideas around narrative. Saskia here taking on board an even bigger four foot across woodcut of a train station and here utilising the idea of reductive woodcuts. Here also touching on the idea of monoprint. Whereas Abby really took some ideas from the slide project in the first year and really started to kind of test ideas around fragments and memory. Whereas this fragmented piece of work is actually a lasagna sheet that's been scratched into directly and printed with a lasagna uh, maker. Josie began to kind of push ideas around body image, which later on evolved into a series of photographic prints. Whereas Finn in SP3 was starting to kind of unveil a more kind of interesting hybrid digital landscape. Whereas Bella was working traditionally with portraiture. Second year students also have to curate their own show, so they work collaboratively to think about how their work is going to be positioned. They have to think about how you navigate through the space and wayfind your way around the space. Students also in the second year get involved in a series of workshops where they work with local colleges to run and facilitate printmaking inductions, learning the skills of coordination and organisation. If level five is an outward facing year, level six is more about refining your practice. Whilst there's still that encouragement to push your image making, there's also that idea of really starting to hone things down towards your degree show. So in this instance, we've got some t-shirt printing to raise some funds for the final degree show. Here we start to see more interesting kind of ideas evolve. Abby was very interested in the idea of horror movies. Whereas Copper started to work in a more performance based way with her practice, starting to use photography as well as video. She also worked digitally as well to create these strange senses of other world. Sid worked between traditional screen printing and also felt making for her final show. Whereas Charlie was working with traditional screen printing, but also attaching paintbrushes to uh, 3D mapping uh, printers that could kind of start to really question the idea of the way that we interface with the digital. Here we've got a projection piece by Charlie, which was one of his final propositions. So Studio Practice 5 can also start to yield us towards the final show. Here we've got a series of films by Abby. This was made during lockdown. This was also made by lockdown where Anna was investigated the internal organs of her body. Lola was very, very interested in the idea of mark making, how mark making could start to yield quite complicated configurations of shape and line. Whereas Leia was really interested in the idea of concrete poetry, combining both image and text. Vilma was really excited by the idea of the Finnish landscape and in the initial run of lockdown she was even printing in Finland using a garden roller. Our students are incredibly inventive image makers and really push a variety of different processes. Here Andy questioning issues around identity whereas Agnieszka here really becoming interested in more sculptural practice but using print to record that. Whereas Jay's work became much more politically focused last year. Rose here investigating the urban environment and Finn again in his final year starting to work with film. Emily's work became increasingly more autobiographical using lo-fi printmaking as well as writing and painting within her work whereas Theo focused much more on the spoken word and performative practice. As we move to our current group of graduate students Mina's work was very excited by colour and organic shape Whereas Ellie had really pushed that investigation of letter forms here, looking at uh, graffiti found in club toilets. Scarlett's work moved away from traditional drawings of birds towards high resolution scans of bird wings. So she really began to hone her research down on ideas around death. Whereas Katie predominantly worked digitally in her final year, mostly producing a series of digital paintings using Procreate, which of course were printed digitally towards her show. 
Pallavi here was really interested in looking at microscopic sections of the human body and also starting to test ideas through 3D printing and then casting those objects in a variety of different materials and seeing what images those yielded. Nicholas was also someone who really became very interested in the idea of 3D mapping, but he was mapping sound works that he was also making alongside his uh, visual practice. He and Milo started to hone in on a variety of different printmaking processes informed by his photographs. Here are a series of screen prints, but he focused quite a lot on lithography, whereas Abby continued to push lo-fi printmaking using transfer prints. Safia here, more interested in exhibiting the hard ground plate rather than the uh, rather than the print of the plate. So here a dry point on plastic exhibited as a final piece of work. Georgie was informed by photography, but towards the final year of the course, she became an absolutely obsessive screen printer. This is a four colour separation screen print. All of these investigating this idea of in-between spaces. Also, photography was then developed into book works as well for her final show. Whereas Saskia moved from exploring predominantly in her first year and second year of woodcut to etching in her final year, where she really began to master the idea of the Aquitaine image. Here, a narrative based on salt. Whereas Kathleen explored the idea of claustrophobia within the domestic environment through a series of folded digital prints. And Phoebe continued to investigate the idea of bodily hair. And why do women shave? So printmaking is about a wide variety of different practices. Aaron, towards his final show last year, started to create digital environments that you could walk around, but those in turn could then produce digital still images. We've had a long success rate of students going to the Royal College to the printmaking MA course, and Aaron is going next year onto the MA course. Max is currently there as a student, so he will finish his first year when Aaron starts next year. Josie is also going on to the course next year. Some of these were graduates from last year, but have taken a gap year before they move on to their MA. Whereas Daisy's one of our current final year students who's about to embark on her MA course also at the Royal College. Uh, Daisy using a wide variety of different printmaking processes, including this instance laser cut fabric or here heavy etched metal plates using uh, a, a photopolymer process. And Ottilie here combining many, many different print processes in the same image. She's also off to the Royal College next year. So why printmaking? It's a fine art course. It's embedded with theory. It offers a huge scope for different ways of making images. But it's also a small course. We foster a sense of community. This was a trip recently to the Tanner Museum, and Ar uh, Tanner Museum Archives. Here we had a trip only a week ago to Christea Roberts Gallery, where we visited a series of commercial galleries in London that specialise in print. Here are some graduates from a couple of years ago having a happy time. So we are in a fortunate position that we know every student and every student feels absolutely valued on this course. It offers so many exciting possibilities. We want you to join in that journey with us. And of course, what do our students go on to do? Some of our students, as already said, go on to the Royal College or Campbell to do printmaking. Some become practicing artists. Some make some set up exhibitions, some sell work, some win awards, some set up residences and art prizes, some set up studios and artist networks, some run, run print workshops and print residences, some become curators, some leading academics, some get into teaching, some become specialist technicians and print for other artists, some become demonstrators and artist facilitators within the community. Some move away from printmaking altogether. Charlotte Cornish is now a painter. Catherine Maple was one of our alumni from 2011. She won the John Moore's Painting Prize only last year. Julie Roberts set up the Lisboa Press in Lisbon after she graduated from the Royal College. Jasmine Collins still an active image maker through print. Some of our students don't actually go on to do MAs, but actually set up their own residences whilst they keep down the nine to five job. Chloe Lawrence did some really exciting projects in a variety of different countries. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to email me. You can also look at our various different Instagram pages and get a sense of what our students are up to.
But if you are excited by the possibility of this course, then please don't hesitate to apply.